Okay, guys, let's talk about the steepness of a line between two points. When we talk about the steepness of a line of a linear function, like we have here on the left, we call this a constant rate of change or slope. Here is the formula to find the constant rate of change between two points on this linear function. But when we talk about nonlinear functions, those graphs that do not have straight lines but have some type of curve, we call it the average rate of change because the steepness between any two points on this graph is not going to be the same. This formula is the average rate of change formula, but you can just review this formula. These mean the same thing. The formula for, for slope is just a little bit less complicated. So the whole idea is the same between these two formulas. So let's talk about whenever we're given a function table and they ask us to find the average rate of change between the interval that's given. So to find the average rate of change between a given interval or to find the slope between two points, we have to have two ordered pairs. Here is our first problem. They want to know what the average rate of change is between x being 0 and 3. So they are going to give us the first x and the second x. And then we have to identify the outputs of when x is 0 and the output when x is 3. So I'm going to just set up my two ordered pairs because it takes two points to find your average rate of change. So the first x value is 0. So in the function table, when x is 0, our output is 2. So that's one ordered pair. When x is 3, our output is 54. Now we have two points, and we can use our slope formula to find the rate of change. So we can just say a r o c a rock equals, here is x1, y1. That's my first ordered pair. And then we have our second ordered pair of x comma y. So the formula says y2 minus y1. So that's 54 minus 2. Then we have a run of x2 minus x1. So x2 is 3 minus x1 of 0. Then we're going to get 52 over 3. We can see if this can simplify. So let's see if 3 can go into 52. And it can't go evenly, so we're just going to leave our answer as 52 over 3. So the average rate of change, we can also use our slope formula, is the difference between the vertical change and the horizontal change. So our y values are vertical and our horizontal values are horizontal. So now let's take a look and see the average rate of change between 1 and 3. So x1 is 1 and x2 value is 3. We look at our function table to find the output. So when x is 1, our output is 6. When x is 3, our output is 54. So now let's find the average rate of change between these two intervals of 1 and 3. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when we subtract these, we're going to get 48 over 2, and then that can simplify to 24. Now let's find the average rate of change between 3 and 4. So I want to set up my ordered pairs, x comma y. So when x is 3, y is 54. And when x is 4, y is 162. So we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And when we subtract these out, 
we're going to get 108, it looks like, over 1, which simplifies to 108. Okay, now let's take a look at finding the average rate of change when we are given a graph as well as the function itself. So first we have to identify the outputs of the given inputs. So they give us our x1 and they give us our x2. So when x is negative four, y is five. And when x is negative one, y is two. So since we have these two points on the graph, I can just physically find the rate of change, which is the rise over the run. So we always start with a point furthest to the left and work our way to the right. So rise is the vertical change. So I'm going down one, two, three, and I'm going to the right one, two, three. So we have, let's write it right here. We can say a rock equals down three and right one, so that gives us negative one. Okay, now let's take a look at the average rate of change between negative two and five. Negative two is x1, five is x2. Our first x, our second x. So when x is two, excuse me, when x is negative two, y is three. When x is 5, y is negative 4. So I want to know the rate of change between these two points. So we're going to do rise over run. So the rise is the y's. We're going to go in a vertical direction. So we're going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we're going to go to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have an A rock of negative seven over seven, which gives us that negative one. And because this is a linear function, all of our A rocks are gonna be negative one because it has a constant rate of change. So we really would use M here, but just for the sake of teaching, we're just gonna write A rock, but you would really use M for slope. Okay, now, Whenever we are finding this next one, so x1 is eight and x2 is 15, notice that when I go to eight on the graph, I do not have it. So this is where we're gonna have to use the function and we're gonna have to input eight to get out the y. And then we're gonna input 15 for x and get out the y. So I have, and I'm just gonna use y instead of f of x. So y equals negative from our function, and then the x value, again, using parentheses, is eight plus one. So y equals negative eight plus one, y equals negative seven. So the output when x is eight is negative seven. Now we have to do the same thing, but this time we have to input 15 for x. Negative, and then x is 15, plus one. Y equals negative 15 plus one. My output is negative 14. Now we're gonna use our formula, our slope, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1. This gives me negative seven on top for our rise going down, and then 15 minus eight is gonna give me seven, and that simplifies to negative one. So again, notice that because this is a linear function, all of your average rate of change is going to simplify to negative one because linear functions always have a constant rate of change. Down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. So no matter what two points, it will always simplify to the same. Okay, let's take a look at a quadratic. 
Again, we're just going to use our slope formula, average rate of change. It's kind of fancy looking, so let's just stick to the simple y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we are given x1 and x2. So I set up my ordered pairs. I look at the graph to see if these values are on this coordinate plane. So I go to negative 4. When x is negative 4, we can see that y is 4. When x is negative 2, y is negative 4. So we're going to draw a line. This is called a seek. Whoops, that's not very straight. Let's try this again. So from point to point on our graph, this is called the secant line. So we're actually finding the slope of this secant line. So we can physically just count from the left point to the right point going up or down first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, negative eight, and then a run of one, two. So a rock over this interval is negative 8 over 2 or negative 4. Okay, let's try our next one. So we want to know the average rate of change between x being negative 3 and x being 0. So that's from negative 3 to 0. So we're going to look at where x is negative 3 and then go down to the function right here on this red graph. I can erase some of this so we don't get confused. And then, so when x is negative 3, y is negative 2. So x1, y1. And then when x is 0, our y is 4. So we're going to draw the secant line. So our average rate of change between this point and this point is going to be a rise of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a run of 1, 2, 3. So our A rock is up 6 and to the right 3 or 2. See how these are different on a nonlinear function? This is not going to be a constant rate of change. It's just an average rate over that given interval. Okay. Let's go to our third problem for this function. So when y, excuse me, when x is one, we can see we don't. It's not on the graph, so we're going to have to use our function. But we can go ahead and set up the ordered pairs. That's x one, and this is x two. We're going to use our function. So we're going to get the outputs so y equals two times the x value. I'm plugging in my one. We're going to evaluate. We square the 1 first. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 2. Plus 8 times 1 is 8. And then we get a grand total of 14. So when x is 1, y is 14. That's an ordered pair, 1 comma 14, way up here. Okay, now let's do it again. And this time we're going to plug in 4 for our x values. Okay, so we're going to square that 16. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Plus 8 times 4 is 32. Plus 4. So 32 plus 32, that is 64. Plus 4 more gives me an output of 68. So our average rate of change. We have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 68 minus 14, that's going to give us 54. 4 minus 1 is 3. I think that can divide out. So I'm going to say 3 into 54. 3 goes into 5 once. Multiply, subtract, bring down. 3 into 24 is 8, so 18. So these are both divisible by 3, so I can say our average rate of change over that interval is 18. 
Okay, let's try one that is um, an exponential function. So again, we are going to set up our ordered pairs and identify those on the graph if we can. If not, we'll use our function. So x1 and y1. So when x is 0, our output is 5. When x is 1, our output is 8. Here's our secant line. And our slope is up 1, 2, 3, and to the right, 1. So our average rate of change over that interval is up 3 and to the right 1, or just 3. Okay, now we are going to find the average rate of change over the interval of 0 to 2. So in this area, 0 to 2, 0 and 2 are my x values. When x is 0, y is 5. When x is 2, y is 14. We draw our secant line. That's not great, but <laughs> let's try that again. Well, that's still not great. So let's just know we have to go up and to the right. So we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that was up 9, right? From 5 to 14 is 9, and then we went over 2. So that was our A rock is up 9 and to the right 2. Okay, now let's do our last one here. Let's choose purple. So our x is 3, x1 is 3, x2 is 4. So we can see that this graph is going off the chart. So when I go to 3, let's see, nope, it, I don't know what it is. So we're going to have to use our function. I'm just going to say y equals x is 3. Okay, so order of operations, we're going to cube the 2, 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And then 8 times 3 is 24, plus 2, so the output is 26. And then using our function again, 3 times 2 raised to the 4th, plugging in 4 for x to get the y, 2 times 2 is 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 times 2 is 16. And then we have 16 times 3. And so 6 times 3, 3 times 6 is 18. Carry the 1, so 48 plus 2. Y is 50. So here's the two points. We want to know how steep the secant line is between those two points. So we have Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 50 minus 26 is 24. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we can just say 24. So that is how you find the average rate of change. It takes two points and then we use our formula, our slope formula. We just plug it in and we calculate. If we can see the two points on the graph, then we can physically on the rise compared to the run. If we can't use the graph because the graph goes off the coordinate plane that we're given, then we have to use the function itself. And we plug in the two x values one at a time to get each of their y values. If we have a function table, we clearly just use the table to list out the two ordered pairs. Again, you're always given the x1 and the x2. And then we have to use either the function equation, the function table, or the function graph to find the outputs. But the formula is the same every time. So just keep in mind, it takes two ordered pairs 